Hi, it's Ryan at Robot Dog Studio, and I am so excited to show you Robot Dog Drums. I've been working on it for over two years, and it takes in everything I love about drums, drum tones, and fixes everything I hate about other drum sample libraries. On top of that, it's just 1000% ear candy, and I can't get enough of playing with it. Robot Dog Drums does so much and does it in a very simple way. I think it's really helpful when you are working with a drum sample library to have it sounding fully mixed right out of the box. And if you want to then break it down to raw drum samples to mix later, uh, being able to do that if you want. But having that fully mixed sound, I think it is really key. You can write your song around that and you, you're not guessing at what it might sound like. And you don't have to be a mixing genius to get a finished sound when you're ready to do your finished mix. So I distilled down all the mixing and processing down to one knob, the character knob. So you can start out with a fully mixed sound, like a very modern glossy sound like this. And then you can scale it back infinitely to a completely unmixed sound. So let's check it out. It's just a really powerful way of getting the tone that you're looking for. So I made 10 real world presets and I built them around professional recordings that I had done for real clients. I replaced the drums with Robot Dog drums and I made them sound as good or in some cases far better than the original mixes that I had done with real drums. So I'll just, I'll just buzz through these presets for you so you can get an idea. This is alternative metal. Next up is Basement Punk. So let's isolate the drums in those two presets. I'm just changing one thing over to basement punk and you're in this sound. Totally different character, lots of room, really warm, kind of like a Steve Albini drum sound or something compared to, uh, you know, a real modern rock drum sound with the other. And both totally badass in their own way. All right, let's go through a couple more here. We got Big Pop Punk. Got clean fusion. Check out the snare and toms on this one. Next up, we got Dry Funk. This mega fat snare drum I got from my friend Ezra Oakland. If you hit the center of the drum, there you get the center of the drum sound. If you 
hit the side, you get the rim shot. And then there's the side stick sound. All right, next up is hardcore grind. This is fun, super aggressive. So beautiful. I just love the snare drum on this one. Amazing. All right, what else we got? Heavy shoegaze. This this one is just, I, I love this one. These, as you can tell, it's just like total ear candy to me and I love it and I just, I really hope you all love it too. Heavy shoegaze. This one uses a huge 26 inch Vista Light kick drum. And of course the Vista Light toms. And this incredible instrument, the Tama Artwood 8x14 snare drum, probably most famously the Dave Grohl uh, Nevermind snare drum. This one I sampled several times to get just right. There's so many overtones to it, and eventually I finally got this really clean, huge sound out of it. I'm really happy with it. Super fun to play on V drums too. Next up is indie pop rock. So you can see um, all these presets, they kind of go up and down with the character knob. That's one of the ways we get different sounds out of them. And also I sampled a ton of like really what I felt like were studio staple, like classic uh, rock instruments, um, but also a couple, um, a few uh, more esoteric ones. The set of toms is a Whale City Ash uh, stave kit that a friend of mine had. Noble and Cooley kick. Also a uh, Noble and Cooley beach snare drum. 
really good like apple <laughs> bite being taken out of an apple crack sound on this one. All right, so I think that brings us to our final preset in here. This is Roots Rock, and uh, this is just a real warm, naturalistic sounding kit. Come lay down next to me. I know you had a long, hard day. I know you don't want to talk, and I ain't got a single thing I need to say. I am here for you. This kit is really good for doing like a, a train beat for country Americana. And that's just a simple loop I put together to show that. But that's also available on the Grooves page right over here. Anyway, uh, again, like such a variety of tones you can get out of this, just, you know, primarily choosing different instruments and um, using that character knob, Roots Rock. Come lay down next to Let's solo it, Roots Rock. Let me switch over to Hardcore Grind. We're just Switching presets, they're all built in. So much fun. All right, so let's uh, quickly go through what's going on in the plugin. So we talked about this character knob. Uh, there's also this punch switch. Just gives you a little uh, more transient punch. I generally leave that on. I might turn it off if I was going to mix all the separate tracks in my DAW, but otherwise I leave it on. All right, yeah, so you have this kit view, which was like one of the key points of differentiation of Robot Dog Drums. Every other plugin has this kind of, I hate to say it, but cheesy 3D rendering of a drum kit. So I created this uh, colors and shapes, uh, simplistic aesthetic, and I think it's super fun. I love it. So um, yeah, you uh, click on an instrument and it shows you what that instrument is in this menu, and you can choose from a list of other instruments to swap in up here. Uh, the snare drums, we've got something like uh, 14 different snare drums, and they're like, like I said, they're just perfectly curated, tuned to perfection. Um, I sampled many more snare drums than this, and I, I threw out quite a few. I didn't want to put anything in this instrument that I wouldn't use myself. And each one of these just, like I said, thousand percent ear candy. I could just pull them up and just, just click on them <laughs> and just enjoy the sound. What's a, what's a fun one here? Um, you know, some really kind of aggressive studio staple rock drums here, like a uh, superphonic six and a half by 14, like, Totally, I wouldn't say this is kind of the John Bonham settings, but that's, you know, his famous uh, snare. Really aggressive, snappy drum. And uh, Black Beauty, six and a half, of course. This one I tuned a little lower. Um, it sounds great if you turn back the character knob a little bit, you get the fatness out of it. Um, this Tama Bronze is, I don't know, just the most incredible drum that my friend Dave Joyal owns, and he's used it on so many great kind of post-hardcore genre recordings. 
just has this amazing snap to it. I don't know how it does it, but I'm really glad that I captured it for posterity here. And of course we talked about the Tama Artwood in 8x14. Hugely powerful drum. And I think just got it really in the sweet spot for pitch for hard rock. Um, that said, you can take any of these drums and you can tune them up and down. Here's that, here's that pretty deep sounding Tama Artwood tuned up high. Or even tuned way lower than it was recorded at. And yeah, with this tuning control, I set the parameters so they wouldn't be like radically high. They just, they're set to what you would actually tune a drum up and down to. It's not like that crazy electronic tune up, tune down kind of thing. It's just realistic tuning ranges. All right, and when I was re, sampling, trying to dial in this Tama, um, my friend Ezra gave me this, I, I didn't even know what to think about this, Premier Brass Hard Rock 9 or Rock 9, so it's like a nine inch drum. It was the, the deepest snare drum that I sampled and I didn't know what to think about it, but he said just tune it low and it's, it's a beast. That I think is my lowest tuned drum in the pack and it was i was so glad to get that in there because it really fills out that like a big fat 80s kind of snare drum and this uh noble and coolie beach drum another of dave joyelle's it's just really has that great crack too like the tama but like a kind of a, an, an airy woody sound to it. All right, here's a fun one, kind of more of a piccolo sound. It's a Pearl uh, Maple Free Floater. Nice and ringy, really has its place for the right song. And this is just another great all around sounding drum, uh, DW Nickel Over Brass. Real fat, solid drum. Q drums, copper and maple snare. Has that cool kind of metallic ring to it. This was uh, another really fun one. This was a Pacific uh, Piccolo, this 13 inch Piccolo that I picked up over 20 years ago. Uh, I was on vacation or something, I got it for 40 bucks and it sounds wicked cool. Again, has its place for the right song. All right, and now kind of go, this last three are kind of higher tuned drums. Before I sample these, I realized I was, I had kind of mid, middle range tuning drums, kind of like where I like to keep them, or at least what I consider middle tuning range. Maybe it's a little low for other people. And I need to get some real snappy, um, hardcore sounding drums in. So um, my friend Raj hooked me up with uh, these th three drums, and I think they came out amazing. Here's a, D'Amico uh, carbon steel drums, extremely heavy drum, and I tune it right up, and it sounds like this. Next is a uh, Canopus uh, brass drum that sounds pretty similar to the D'Amico, but it sounded so good I had to keep both in. It's got a little bit more of a thonk to it. It works really good for a fusion sound. I use it for the clean fusion preset. And lastly, I think this was like a, a vintage Sonor Maple 7.5 by 14 drum and it had brass hoops and this really vivid uh, orange color. <laughs> and uh, this one just sounded incredible and is a really aggressive high tune drum and it's really a lot of fun to play on V drums too. 
yeah, so that's that one. I love that one. So the other really cool thing about every snare drum is you can flip it to a snare off sound. So every snare drum has a totally fully sampled snare off sound. A ton of fun again to play on V drums. This one sounds huge. It's all in there, just flip the snare on and off. All right, so we got a ton of great kick drums in there too. The kind of the one I lean on a lot on this rock stuff is this uh, Gretsch uh, Maple 24 by 20 kick. Just really beefy with a great snap to it. And there are just a ton of other great kicks. They all have their use. Noble and Cooley, uh, Yamaha Recording Custom, uh, the house kit uh, for Robot Dog Studio, which is a PDP Birch uh, kit. And man, the kick, kick just sounds great as an over all around good sounding kick drum. Uh, and of course the Vista Lights got a huge 26 inch one. Sounds amazing. And then another variation, 24 inch tuned a little higher. And just for fun, this uh, 20 inch kind of no name um, made in Japan uh, 60s kit. Kind of for a little bit of, of warm uh, retro vintage flair. Uh, this is definitely not a do everything pack. It's just everything, do everything kind of rock, hard rock, indie, metal, all that kind of stuff. Um, someday I'll come back and I'll do like a vintage drums pack, but I just figured I'd throw one in for fun. Anyway, that brings us to the toms. We've got, um, this is my house kit, the, the PDP Birch kit, just great all around rock kit I found. I am very used to tuning it and recording it and of course had to have it in the pack here. Sounds really good. Um, some Noble and Coolies, just like a real boutique set of drums. Another set of Noble and Coolies, a little ringier. Um, this Gretsch kit sounds really big. Has a good snap to it at the same time. Gotta have a Yamaha recording custom kit in there. It's a real tight sounding kit. And of course the Vista lights sound amazing. Uh, a couple others in there and of course um, the the Made in Japan toms to go with that kick. Real nice and, and warm and dry sounding. So you can click this to change all the toms at once, which is generally what I do. Or you can deselect that and you can create a jelly bean kit. And you know, they sound a little different, but you'll notice they're all like really compatible. They, you know, it's just uh, kind of my style of tuning and recording. They're all, they all kind of, kind of will fit with each other. And I think you can do some really fun things uh, mixing and matching like that. All right, so I think that brings us to cymbals. A ton of really great cymbals were sampled. Like I'd say a really comprehensive collection of cymbals. I wanted to represent the major brands. We'll check out the hi-hats. Starting with uh, starting with the Zildjian's, I use these uh, these old like '90s Zildjian New Beat 15 inch hi hats uh, in my studio a lot. Sort of like real big dark sounding hi hats. Also have these vintage 14 inch Zildjian's. They really work great for indie rock or just kind of anything mellower. And then uh, uh, Meinl Byzantz uh, 15 inch set of hats. These, these just have such a, such a rich, beautiful sound.
and uh, some Peisty Dark Crisp 14 inch hats. These also have a really complex sound, really pretty. And then I uh, had to get some Sabians in the mix. These are some HHX Evo 14 inch hats. They're kind of bright and crisp. And then, uh, you know, same thing. All, you know, the major brands represented in the crash symbols, all kind of big crash symbols. They're in there. Uh, good selection, five different rides from those major brands. Um, then we've got you know, a bunch of Chinas, uh, even a bunch of, even a couple, <laughs> even even three different little bell bell sounds in here. And a few splash symbols as well. Oh, also this cool stack setup. Uh, my friend Raj built these stacks for me of all different symbols and they just all have their own cool sound. And lastly, on this page, there's a few uh, percussion pieces built in, just for fun. And they're samples taken right out of uh, commercial songs that I produce, so they work really well in a mix. All right, uh, moving on to the mixer page. Um, now, this mixer is very simple. Don't let it intimidate you at all. Just, you know, kick, snare, toms, hi-hat, ride, the cymbals here. And they can all be bussed to different outputs. And uh, there's a room channel here, so you can hear the room sound by itself. Here with no room sound. This isn't a particularly roomy preset. Let's go to uh, Heavy Shoegaze. That one relies a lot on the room sound. So we'll switch over to Heavy Shoegaze and listen to that one. So we'll listen to the room by itself there. And then we'll uh, take the room out and we'll see how much of a difference that makes to the sound. Much drier, put it back in. Love it. Uh, let's go to the post hardcore sound. I wanna show y'all something. All right. All right, so this is a cool thing I built right in. It's uh, kind of additional trigger samples built right in on the kick and snare, and they're kind of curated to work with each of the different snare drums and kick drums, and just something you don't have to think about. You can shut them off if you want. Anyway, here's the, here's the kick sound, and you can crank up this 808, I called it. You can get that really aggressive sample in there. Just put it down to the default level if you, you know, want it blended in like I intended it to be blended in. Then here's the snare. Turn up the trigger on that. Turn off the trigger. You can just, on any of these, if you want to bypass them, just click on the word. Alright, so that's snare with no trigger. Little wussier. Turn the trigger on. Fattened up. So that's all built in. That's just like one of the things that just gets you more to a completely mixed sound right out of the box. And you know, if you don't wanna use them, you just shut them off like that. One thing you might wanna do on any sound here is kind of vary the amount of room sound of like say the kick or snare, which is something you're doing all kinds of tricks with on an acoustic mix to try to do. But you can just sort of crank up the amount of room here on the snare. just increases the amount of room that comes through the room mic channel. Or you can turn it down and get a very dry sound. 
put it to default. So in that same vein, if we solo the room channel, you can vary the size of the room, you know, within reason here. So here's, here's the most amount of room you can add. Or you can make it a very small, tight room sound. Or somewhere in between. So yeah, there's a few master effects. You can kind of turn uh, bleed on and off, turn overall reverb up and down or off. There's some compression, saturation, uh, tape saturation. Um, and here's the reverb time right here for the built-in reverb. Uh, here's the useful feature link reverb. So if you have tom or symbol reverb linked, all the reverb controls will move in unison. Um, there's a few output presets built in if you're busting it out to mix in your own DAW. If not, you just keep it on a stereo track, keep it on the stereo output preset. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a lot of uh, drum plugins have these extensive mixer sections. I wanted to make it do a lot and do it in a really simple, usable way. It's just got, got kind of all the features that I would want there and not a bunch of excessive kind of proprietary interface for a bunch of EQs and compression and stuff. It's all just kind of one knob controls. And if you put them at their default settings, they're going to sound great. You can push them a little bit, but hopefully you can't go too wrong with them is how I designed it. Anyway, after that, you get to the setup page and uh, kind of everything is there, all the different articulations. Even Tom rims and Tom rim shots. Uh, you can configure it for electronic drums. You can do positional sensing on the snare drum, all kinds of stuff like that. And you know we'll get that into that in uh, another video. But trust me, it's all there. There are um, presets for um, if you have a Roland V drum kit. If you're coming from Superior Drummer or Get Good Drums or anything, we have presets that will kind of allow you to use those loops or kind of where you're used to having your, your MIDI map set up. And of course you can load and save your own uh, MIDI mappings and all the settings on this page. Anyway, so there is a grooves page. Uh, I've done another video on this and I want to do something different than having a huge library of random grooves that either sound cheesy or they're too specific or you know you just have too many to pick through. What I did was just created some some starter grooves here that just take away the most tedious part of programming, pro programming in the basic backbeat. There are some quick adjustments you can make to any of these grooves. You can go from the hi-hat to the ride to the floor tom. You can add in ghost notes. Ghost notes on the snare. And you can start it off with a crash. You can raise and lower the velocity. So you can pull those basic backbeats into your DAW. Sounds like this. And then you can go in and just, you know, customize it to whatever bass line you're working with. Just kind of forces you to be more creative. Kind of how I would work anyway. And there's a bunch of fills in there as well, fill starters. They're also, you know, pretty simple, but you can customize them the way you want. There's a faster one. And there's here is like a big uh, flam fill. Kind of, again, the Dave Grohl style. But anyway, all that stuff is in there, so it's very useful stuff. So thanks so much for coming on this little mini tour of Robot Dog Drums with me. Uh, you know, leave me some comments, let me know what you think about it. Hopefully it's out by the time you watch this or very, very soon. I cannot wait to hear what you come up with it.